This video was produced in collaboration with Allison Adams. Check out The Rebel and the King on Amazon.com. The book was written by Nick Adams with a preface by Allison Adams. Nick Adams was born in Natticoke, Pennsylvania to a poor coal miner, but grew up in Jersey City, New Jersey. His father moved the family to New Jersey following the death of an uncle in a coal mining accident. Adams graduated from St. Peter's College and got his start in acting in a small New York stage production. In the 1950s, after a stint in the U.S. Coast Guard, Adams moved to Los Angeles to pursue his acting career. He auditioned for every role Hollywood had to offer and finally got a break when he snuck onto a Hollywood set in his Coast Guard uniform and landed a role in John Ford's 1955 film, Mr. Roberts, starring Henry Fonda and James Cagney. We gotta write a real hot one next week, huh, Mr. Roberts? We'll use asbestos paper! Yeah. He'll fix the old man's clock. You wait. Yeah. His next role was in the iconic Rebel Without a Cause, starring James Dean and Natalie Wood. What's the funny guy doing? Yeah, the guy in back of us, Buzz. Moo. Yeah, he ought to have his wardrobe cleaned and burned. All right, Moo. All right. Adams, Dean, and Wood became fast friends and could be seen hanging out all over Hollywood. It is believed that Adams had a short romance with Wood during that time, given their close bond formed in part by a shared Ukrainian heritage. But the fun wouldn't last long. On September 30th, 1955, Adams and Wood learned of James Dean's death after he crashed his Porsche on California State Route 46. Adams flew to New York to tell Woods, but her handlers wouldn't let him break the bad news because she had an important photo shoot the next day. Adams spent the entire day with Woods, holding back his pain and keeping the terrible news from his friend. Adams went back to work and landed bit parts Hello, in Picnic with William Holden and Kim Novak. Bunch of us guys are, uh, are chipping in on a hot rod. I get it every Friday night. Well, don't expect to honk the horn and have me run out. And Pillow Talk with Rock Hudson and Doris Day. You all right? I don't feel so good. Do you, you mind if we sit this one out? No, of course not. Thank you. Adams pressured his manager to get him an audition for Love Me Tender and was given a wardrobe and screen test. In the end, directors decided he was too young for the part. While Adams was leaving the soundstage, someone called his name. It was Elvis Presley. Elvis approached Adams and told him how much he enjoyed his performance in Rebel Without a Cause. Adams was very grateful for the praise and offered to show Elvis, who was staying at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel around town. Soon, the two were going to the beach and movies, sometimes bringing along Adams' friend, Natalie Wood. Next to these two meteoric stars, Adams was the struggling small part actor. He wrote in his journal about attending the showing of the 1956 film The Last Wagon, his biggest part to date with Elvis and Wood. When I saw my name on the screen, I began to cry, reflecting on the hard work it took to get this far, and thinking of all the hard times my family had been through. Natalie Wood leaned over, kissed him on the cheek, and told him she knew how he felt. Elvis patted him on the shoulder and said the same thing. The next day, all the papers had to say about the event was that Elvis and Wood were necking at the movies. In September 1956, Adams visited Elvis and his parents at the family home at 1034 Audubon Drive in Memphis for eight days. Presley had returned home to prepare for his homecoming concert in Tupelo. I never felt so at home in my entire life, Adams wrote in his journal, and described Presley's parents as wonderful, sincere, and honest. Adams told stories of the gargantuan breakfast that Gladys prepared for her famous son and other sumptuous meals and snacks, including those famous peanut butter and banana sandwiches Elvis loved to eat. Everywhere Elvis and Adams went, they were mobbed. It was like a circus ride through Memphis. Hundreds lined the fence outside the home every day just to get a glimpse of Elvis Presley. One day, Presley took Adams to Sun Record Studios in Memphis to meet founder Sam Phillips, the man who helped make Elvis famous. Later that day, Elvis took Adams to his old high school, Humes, to meet his favorite teacher, Mrs. Scrivener, and talk to her students. Adams wrote how Elvis talked to everyone. He patiently answered questions, called men sir, and signed scads of autographs. Anyone who talked to Elvis for two minutes would think he was the greatest guy in the world. Why? Because he's for real. Adams finished his journal with, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because Elvis is my friend. 
Adams accompanied Elvis to his homecoming Tupelo show and recalled when Elvis took the stage. I thought someone had just dropped an atomic bomb. They cheered so loud, I thought I was going to lose an eardrum. Nick Adams. Nice Hi, to meet you, Nick. And how are you? From where now? From Hollywood, California. And uh, you're a star, I understand. A motion uh, picture star, right? Ryan, you know. Are you on tour with Elvis? Well, I just came with him. Uh, he's a genuine friend, and uh, you can't speak too, well, too highly about him. Elvis, what's the name of those things your mother fixed me up? Ochre? Ochre. Ochre, <laughs> and I like ochre. After the show, Presley and Adams flew back to Los Angeles, where they were mobbed again at the airport. Adams wrote, Hollywood still looked the same. How I would rather be back in Memphis. Soon, Presley would be inducted into the Army. In 1958, Elvis's mother Gladys died. Adams flew to Memphis to attend the funeral. Not long after, Adams and Elvis drifted apart, not unlike many friends who have dual traveling careers do. Despite the losses, 1958 proved to be a great year for Adams as he starred in one of the most memorable roles of his career in No Time for Sergeants, opposite Andy Griffith. That's where I'm going too far past the eye test. <laughs> how about that? Yeah, how about that? Oh, Ben, you ain't still sad about not being in the infantry. The captain didn't even read my letter. In 1959, Adams landed his most famous role in The Rebel and married a Hollywood starlet and former child actress Carol Nugent. The Rebel was very successful, but canceled after a short run due to studio politics. Last time I tried to help him, I got kicked in the teeth and nearly lost my horse. So save your breath. I'm not going to walk into that courtroom to please anyone but me. Hi, Nick Adams. Tonight, The Rebel was presented by Cheer. This is the one to use. Wash is so white, you can see the difference. Try Cheer. Look for that difference. And look for The Rebel again next week. For the rest of Adam's life, he struggled to find work in Hollywood. Despite this, he managed to land another lead role in a television series when he was cast in Saints and Sinners in 1962. In 1963, he spent over $8,000 to advertise in hopes of winning an Academy Award nomination for his role in Twilight of Honor. Ben, when they arrested you in Springfield, did you sign this confession? Um, not at first, sir, so uh, they kept questioning me. All day, through the night, too. They feed you? <laughs> no, sir. And, uh, he succeeded in receiving the nomination, but lost the Oscar to Melvin Douglas. Though he claimed he'd never leave the United States for work, Adams traveled to Japan to work on Frankenstein Conquers the World and Invasion of Astro Monster, which have both become cult classics loved by Godzilla fans. <laughs> On the night of February 7th, 1968, Adam's lawyer and friend, Irvin Rader, drove to Adam's house in West Los Angeles to check on him after a missed dinner appointment. Seeing a light on in the house and a car in the garage, Rader broke through a window and discovered Adam's in his upstairs bedroom, slumped dead against the wall. During the autopsy, Dr. Thomas Noguchi found enough peraldehyde in the body to cause instant unconsciousness. The death certificate lists peraldehyde and promazine intoxication as the immediate cause of death, along with the notation, accident, suicide, undetermined. Elvis sent a calling card to Adams' funeral, signed E.P. The death of Nick Adams has been cited in articles and books about Hollywood's unsolved mysteries, along with speculation by a few of Adams' acquaintances that he was murdered citing claims that no traces of peraldehyde were ever found in his home. However, Adam's brother, Andrew, a medical doctor, had prescribed the sedative to him. Nick Adams' body was returned to his birth state of Pennsylvania. He was buried at St. Cyril and Methodius Ukrainian Cemetery in Berwick. The backside of his gravestone, which bears the silhouette of Adams wearing the Civil War era cap from his television series, is inscribed, Nick Adams, the Rebel actor of Hollywood screens. Nick Adams, like many others, went to Hollywood to pursue a dream. Through hard work and determination, he made a name for himself, but it all came to a tragic end. In 2012, Adams' daughter Allison discovered a manuscript written by her father about his friendship with Elvis Presley and published The Rebel and the King by Nick Adams. Both Allison and her brother Jeb believe there was foul play around their father's untimely death and to this day seek answers for the unsolved mystery. 
Alison Lee Adams' forthcoming book, Gone Away, a daughter's memoir about the mysterious death of Nick Adams, will further explore the matter and compile all the puzzling evidence. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video.